since we are now going to officially start, my name is Clement Vital, Learning Support Advisor in the Ministry of Education and the coordinator of the Mass Power Competition. I want to welcome each and every one of you here this, after this morning. We have the, some of our Ministry of Education officials here with us. Okay, we have this morning Mr. Maximir, David Maximir. He is our Senior Education Officer for Secondary Schools. We have with us our education officers here with us this, this morning. We want to say welcome to all our officers from the Ministry of Education who are here with us. This is our seventh time we are having the Mass Power Contest. It began in 2009. And um, every two years, we will have the Mass Power Contest. But we have had some difficulties with um, the COVID and the disaster that we encountered during the years. So, so we missed having the competition on a regular basis. So I'm happy that we were able to, to restart the mass power contest because we realized that mathematics is one of the subjects that our students fear. When we look at how we can encourage students in doing the mathematics, loving the mathematics, we came up as a Ministry of Education this Maths Power competition. And ever since, we have been seeing a, a shift in the performance of our students because students are given the opportunity to prepare for the competition. And one area of the competition that really helped us or helped the students is mental maths. We know that mental maths is something that you do in your head without any paper, paper or pencil. You have to learn the strategies and how to solve the problem. So this is why our theme for the mental maths, for this competition, sorry, is mental maths matters. So this morning, we will have the primary school students competing, six primary schools, and then we will have also six secondary school competing, going through two rounds. The first round will be the mental maths, and the second round will be problem solving. So we look forward to a keen competition this morning. We are hoping that at the end of it, we will have our top primary school or the best primary school in mathematics in Dominica showcased. And we'll have also our best secondary school in mathematics being showcased. We know that the anticipation is high. So we know we will have a very good competition this morning. To give, let us just all stand at this time, and we'll have the Roseau Primary School students to come up and do the national anthem. Uh, 
Also, die A straight line, okay, right, good. Thank you very much. Was it? Oh, okay. For prayer, we have the Rosa Diaz to do this for us, a student. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Thank you, everlasting Father, for this day. Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. As his students are about to do the math power contest, help them to remember what they have practiced. We pray that you will guide and protect us throughout the rest of your day. I pray that you will help us to do good in our life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. You can have your seat. I want to thank the students for, from the Rosa Primary School for National Anthem. And... The prayer from the student of the Rosal Seventh day Adventist School. At this time, I'd like to call on Mr. David Maximir to give a brief remark 
Uh, put your hands together for him, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I find a room filled with young people, we kind of a little cold kind of thing. So I suspect that we're dealing with the butterflies in our stomachs, right? All right, that's okay. Um, let me first of all extend um, good morning to my colleagues from the Ministry of Education, um, to all our parents, all our teachers, all our stakeholders who are gathered here with us this morning. I say good morning and welcome to this Maths Power Contest. Um, I first of all want to commend the schools who have made it thus far. I attended and was a part of the prelims leading up to this day. And at some of the competition, some of the very teachers who teach said, man, I can't understand how these students get this thing so quickly. So it means that you at a stage that you even better than some of us as adults. So I commend you for that. I, I also want to commend you or, or to encourage you to continue to work hard at a subject like you heard Mr. Vital said. Mr. Vital said, a subject that poses so much challenges to the persons who take it at even CXC level. Some of us as adults don't like maths at all. And I often tell people that maths don't really want you to like it. You just have to pass the thing. So you work hard at it. And it's like a cricketer who goes out every day and practice. A footballer who goes out every day and practice. As you practice, you get better at it. So some of you have done well. And we commend you for that. Continue to work hard and continue to study. Like the good book says, you must study to show yourself approved. And many of you have done that today. Let me also inform you that not all of us can win. So if today you don't, you don't emerge as number one, don't feel discouraged. In fact, you should be proud of yourself that you've gotten that far in the process. So, there's going to be only one person coming out, one group coming out on top. Don't get discouraged by that, but be encouraged that you at least made it to the final. Saying that, though, I also want to encourage you to do your best. While it's only one group and can emerge as winner, do your best to be that group. To our sponsors, you see all those lovely banners behind me. We really want to say thanks to our um, National Bank. We would not be here if it wasn't for these persons putting up their finances in challenging economic times to support you young people. So we thank these persons. We thank you all for all that you've done. And we, we, we hope that going forward that we can continue in that vein. Once again, thanks everyone and have a, have a successful power contest. Thank you, Mr. Maxime. We are going now to call on the students to take their position on, of, up front. And as you call your names, you come up front. But I want to just recognize our sponsors. Our gold sponsor this, today for our mass power contest is the National Bank of Dominica and they have been with us from the inception of the mass power contest. They have never let us down and so we want to say thank you um, National Bank of Dominica for sponsoring this competition and being at it with us and supporting us at the Ministry of Education. We have other corporate sponsors that came on board with us this year. We have the National Cooperative Credit Union who came on board this year to also support us. 
We have Astafans, J. Astafans and Company Limited, who came on board also to support us. We have Fine Foods, who came on board to support us. We have the Central Cooperative Credit Union. We have HHV Research. Um, Gabriel, Josephine Gabriel, Con Company Limited, and Springfield Trading. But we don't want to forget DBS Radio. Because DBS Radio have sponsored the live coverage for Mass Power Contest. And, and we thank them for doing that gladly, without any problems. And they have been doing our ads and also live streaming. So I want to give, say thank you to DBS Radio for supporting us at this venture. So at this time, we are going to call the students, get ready for the competition. So as I call your name, your table is labeled, so you go straight and sit on your tables. So the first school for primary school, we have the Berean Christian Academy. And they go by the name of Dwente Ogis. No, sorry, wrong, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, yes. Kyle Simon and Leshan Loder. All right? Thank you very much. Next we have the okay. Lighthouse Christian Academy. <laughs> Davana Davani Pascal and Irvin George. followed by the Atkinson Primary School. <laughs> Dwente Ugis and Shanti Charles. Kulibishri Primary School. <laughs> Nayafel Mondezui and Liam Bedno. Roosevelt Douglas Primary. Elkan Edwards and Nazio Paul. Finally, Sufre Primary School. Anfia John Charles and Jeremy Roll. Okay. Okay, sorry, I, I had my. Okay, so it's Mickey. Is that Mickey? So Judah. Davis and Eldon John Baptist. Yes, yeah, sorry, I have the wrong thing. All right, let's put our hands together for our students, please. Now, I want you to test your buzzers. So we'll call you by school, and you will test the buzzers. Okay, ready, Mr. Okay, Akinson Primary, buzz in, please. Thank you. Biran Christian Academy. Thank you very much. Kulibistri Primary. Thank you. Lighthouse Christian Academy. Thank you. Roosevelt Douglas Primary. 
Thank you very much. Sufre Primary. Okay, so the, you're already on the buzzers already, okay? Very good. All right, I want you to relax. The first segment of the competition is the Mental Maths competition. You have 25 questions. Um, so the, we have with us Mr. Gamon Abraham, a teacher from the Dominica Grammar School. Let's give him a big hand, please, as he come. And he will be our judge for this segment of the competition. Let's welcome him, please, again. Hello, good morning to everyone. My name is actually Gamon Graham. So, okay. Um, and I think a lot of people in, say, inside here know me as someone who love, appreciate, and is a passionate about mathematics. And I hope one day the individuals, the young people we have at primary school level will be excellent in secondary and one day be prominent in our society in some form or type or way in mathematics. Because maths is in everything we do. I know Mr. Vidal and Mr. Vital, sorry, and Mr. Maxime mentioned that maths is in everything. As the judge, I need to read the rules and regulations of this competition. It's very important that you listen attentively and you know exactly what you need to do. Okay? Please listen up. A team is comprised of three competitors selected by each school for the contest. However, two competitors will take part in the competition, as you can clearly see right now. While one competitor is allowed to be on the standby in case a competitor falls sick during the contest. God forbid that don't happen. The first rule, or what we should call the regulations, competitors must be attired in their complete school uniform and they look lovely attired. Papers, pens, markers, and mini whiteboards will be provided for each team to write and display their answers. That's especially for segment two. Okay? The third one. The competition is made of two segments, as I mentioned. The first one is called a speed run or mental math. As you know, mental math matters. It's the theme. It's very important to be good mentally at mathematics. It helps you with everything. Maths is everywhere. Remember that. Competitors are not allowed to write or use paper and pencil to work out answers in this segment. All calculations must be done in your head. The second segment is called problem solving. Competitors will be allowed to use paper and pencil to work out their answers. Also, the screen at the front will show diagrams and the question itself. Okay, four. Competitors must allow each question to be read completely. I'll read that again. Competitors must allow each question to be read completely before answering. Take that in mind, students. A, comp a question, sorry, will be read once for the mental math segment. A question will be read once for the mental math segment segment. For the problem solving segment, the question will be read twice and displayed on the screen. Team members are allowed to confer and work together on each question. Okay, it's important. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's what they say. Five, each team is allowed to attempt each question once in segment one. I'll repeat, each team is allowed to attempt each question once in segment one. 
If the question is answered incorrectly by a team member, a new question will be given. So we move on. And we have 25 questions to complete in segment one. Please listen attentively. Six, competitors will be given 30 seconds to answer questions in segment one and one minute in segment two. When a team member buzzes in, he or she must answer the question immediately and completely. It's very important to include your units as well. Okay? It. For the mental math segment, any team with three consecutive wrong answers will be penalized with a deduction of two points from their total score. Don't be nervous. Keep trying. However, it's important that you are buzzing in with a correct answer. Not just buzzing to buzz in. Nine. Calculators may only be used. Calculators may only be used for segment two at the secondary school level. We're in primary school, so no calculators right now. Eleven. Sorry. Ten. Competitors are not allowed to use cell phones during the contest. Okay? Number 11, the audience shall remain silent during the competition. When this segment is over, you can clap. For the young people, that's very important because at the end, it's not easy coming and competing. A lot of people take that for granted. As Mr. Maxime alluded to, a lot of people are butterflies. It's important to have them and to work and try your best to get your answer correct. The last one, every team must abide by all the rules and regulations for the contest. Thank you very much. As your judge, I would like to say congratulations on reaching this level. Good job to all the participants. We're going to start in a few seconds. So please keep the buzzer close to you, but do not press it until you have the answer. Please wait for the question to be read. Do not just buzz in for buzzing in sick. Okay? You all are ready? Okay. Segment one. There is a mic in front of you. You have to press the button as you can see. It will show green. It's very important that you press that to give the answer. So you can leave it off for now. But when you press the button, press the... Yes. Thank you very much. No, press it, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, as I was saying, segment one, you have 30 seconds. The 30 seconds starts right after the question is read. Each question will be read only once. Question number one. Which is larger, 1.5 or 1.45 No one didn't buzz him Yes, it's supposed to on the screen. I saw several. I think it wasn't on. Give us a second, eh, please. Yeah. Okay, give us a second there, please.
Apologies for the sudden delay. Let's start. Question number one. Remember the question will be read once. Question number one. Which is larger, 2.8 or 2.87? Lighthouse? 2.87. Thank you very much. That's correct. Number two. What is seven times five minus eight times four? Do not see the answer until you are paused in. Could it be three primary? Three. Three. Thank you very much. That's correct. I, let, allow me to call this primary school first. And then you give the answer. Thank you very much. Number three. What is 1,054 rounded off to the nearest hundred? Sufria Primary. 1,100. Thank you very much. That's correct. Number four. What is the difference between 407 and 209? Roosevelt Douglas Primary. 202. No, that's incorrect. The answer is 198. Question number five. What is 76 plus 14 plus 11 plus 9? Roosevelt Douglas. Twenty. That's incorrect, sir. The answer is a hundred and ten. And be careful, you have two incorrect. But you see, they said consecutive. So the next one, hopefully you get it correct. Number six. Please listen attentively. The twentieth prime number is 71 what is the 19th prime number lighthouse 67 repeat that 67 thank you very much that's correct try to bring the mics a little bit closer to you all yes Okay, and leave them off while you speak and then put it back, put it on when I call your when I call you. Okay. Number seven. How many legs are there if there are eight hens and five pigs on a farm? Lighthouse. Twenty eight. That's incorrect. That. The answer is 36. Number eight. Please listen attentively to the questions. How many meters are there in 450 centimeters? Berrian. Four meters and fifty centimeters. So four and a half. Repeat that answer. Four and a half. Four and a half meters. meters. Is that your that's four and a half meters you're saying? That's correct. He corrected himself. 
Thank you. All right. You could also see 4.5 meters. Number nine. What number, when multiplied by itself, becomes 144? Could it be three primary? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Number 10. How many milliliters are there in one? 0.25 liters. Could it be three primary? 1,250. That's correct. Excuse me? What he, he said liters. It's milliliters. Yes, but we, that will be done for segment two. For, say, for first wrong, that's fine. Because the answer is how many milliliters? So he said 1,250. That's fine. Okay, number 11. In an obtuse triangle, two of the angles are 35 and 15 degrees, respectively. What is the missing angle? Could it be three primary? 130. Excellent job, sir. 130 is correct. Number 12. Nelson left home for school at 8.24 a.m. He walked for 37 minutes. At what time did he arrive? Lighthouse? 9.01 a.m. Excellent. 9.01 a.m. That's correct. 13. How many 250 milliliter liters cups of juice can be taken from a two-liter flask of juice. Roosevelt Douglas Primary? It. it is correct. Good job, young men. Are the other buzzers working? I, I, I just because I realize I am not, I, it's a couple of the schools I'm getting through. Hold on a while, huh? Try your own right now, sir. Press it. Press it. No, I'm talking about this. What? Yes, your own. Press, press it. Okay, it's coming. Try yours, please. Okay. You all are not. Keep your hand on it. When you press it, just keep your hand on it. Okay, wonderful. Number 14. What is the approximate height in meters of most doors? Front door. Could it be three primary? Yes. Excellent job. Two meters it is. I suspect Mr. Father is a builder. Okay, number 15. What is 27 over 8 as a mixed number? Lighthouse? 3 over 8. Excellent, that's correct. Yes, you can clap after you give the answer. It helps. Sixteen. Two angles in a triangle are 30 degrees and 40 degrees, respectively. What is the third angle? Superior primary? No. 110 degrees. Excellent job, sir. It's 110 degrees. 
Correct. 17. A batsman scores 30, 8, 0, and 42 runs in four innings. What is his mean score? Atkinson. 80. 18 is incorrect. 80. His mean score is actually 20. Okay? Keep trying. Number 18. What is the next number in the sequence? 111, 103, 95, 87. Super Air Primary. 79. Thank you very much. That's correct. Good job. 19. Five years ago, Alan was six years old. What will be his age in 2028? Lighters, lighthouse, sorry. 15 years old. Correct, that's correct. Good job, students. Number 20. An equilateral triangle has sides with length y plus 5 centimeters. What is the value of y if the perimeter of the triangle is 21 centimeters? Superior primary. I, y equals 2 centimeters. Two centimeters is correct. Good job, sir. Twenty-one. How many centimeters are there in one and a quarter meters? Atkinson Primary. 125 centimeters. Thank you very much, my dear. That's correct. 22. A hiker walks at 50 miles per hour for four hours. How far did the hiker walk? Atkinson Primary. 200 miles. Excellent. That's correct. 200 miles it is. Okay. 23. We are going good so far. Two numbers have a sum of 15 and a product of 26. What are the numbers? Roosevelt Douglas. And 13. Repeat. Two. Two. Two and 13. That's correct. Two and 13. Good job, students. 24. How many lines of symmetry are in a regular pentagon? Berrian. Academy? Five? Yes, five is correct. The last question in segment one. We are going very good or wrong one if you want to call it this way. Please listen. What is 16 over 24 in its simplest form? Yes, same group, Berrien C Academy. Two over three. 
two over three is correct. Good job, students. That's end of segment one. Good job. Give them a round of applause. Yes. I have to attest these students are excellent. Trust me. Looking forward to you all in high school. Doesn't matter which high school you go to. Okay? Let's continue. Segment two will be one minute long. You'll be given pencils, paper. Also, you'll, the question will be placed on the screen. So it's imperative that you screen to your advantage. Okay? Give me a second. Right now, I'm going to give the scores for segment one. That gives us an idea of where we are and where we can reach in terms of the set of questions, the remaining questions. Okay, give me a second.
Okay, Atkinson Primary, 10 points. Berean Christian Academy, 15 points. Please clap for the students. It's not easy. Kulibishri Primary, 20 points. And one of the teams are, are tied with the, with, the, with the top. Lighthouse Christian Academy, 25 points. Roosevelt Douglas Primary, 10 points. Sufra Primary, 25 points. So we have Light of Christian Academy and Sufra Primary with 25 points each, followed by Kulibishri with 20, Berrien Christian Academy, 15, and we have Atkinson Primary and Roosevelt Douglas with 10 points each. For segment two, yes. For segment two, each question is worth 10 points. For segment one, each question was worth five points. Segment two, 10 points. In this segment, you write your answer on the whiteboard provided. There is a section you do your work in and at the back you put the answer. Okay? Or you could just put the answer right away if you know it. Put the right answer on it. You have one minute to perform that task. And when you show your answer or you, in that case you tell you, you have to show your answer. Please remember that multiple people can have the same answer, but you have to show it. Do not wait for somebody to show it before and then show it after. When the time elapses, every school shows what they have as their answer. Understandable? Do we understand what I just said? Okay, wonderful. After one minute pass, all schools show your answer. Do not wait for one group to show his or her answer and then you show yours. Okay? So after that, no pencil should be in your possession. Question number one. Please, it's important that you pay attention to the question that is being read. It will be read twice. Remember that. A vehicle is carrying two persons. One person weighs 52 kilograms and 250 grams. And the other person weighs 37 kilograms, 700 grams. What is the total weight of the two individuals on the vehicle in grams? A vehicle is carrying two persons. One person weighs 52 kilograms, 250 grams. And the other person weighs 37 kilograms, 700 grams. What is the total weight of the two individuals on the vehicle in grams? We have a little technical difficulties. Hold on, while please. You can still time them. Yeah. Clayton, forty seconds left.
Okay, you can stop. Put your answers face down. Thank you very much. I'll tell you when to raise it. Okay. Hold on a minute because we're getting certain things rectified in terms of the computing. You can show your answers right now. Let, let face me. Okay, read out the answer you have, my dear. From yes, yes. So everybody can hear it. Eighty nine, eighty nine thousand nine hundred fifty grams. Sit, I know you. Sit louder, please. Eighty nine thousand. Eighty nine thousand nine hundred fifty grams. Okay, that's totally right. Okay. Eighty-nine thousand nine hundred and fifty grams. Okay, so they have it right. The number you have is incorrect, so you don't have to read this one. You can show it. Yes, you don't have eighty-nine. Say it. Okay, Mr. Gaman, call the school so the scholars can get the the. the, the oh. They have to buzz in, so that is that no, is no, why. No, they're not buzzing in at this time. This is second. I know. Turn the. Oh, okay, I see. All right. Okay. Apologies, uh, lighthouse. The answer is correct, okay, as well as Roosevelt Douglas, the answer is also correct. What number do you have? Press, press the, um, the buzz, yes. 205.7. That's what I tell you, it's incorrect. So for us, it's incorrect as well. You was right in. Yes, no, you know that. That's incorrect as well. Okay, Iris, Iris, by the way, the reason we start on number two is because number one was shown prematurely, so we started on number two. Okay, let's continue. You'll see it on your screen. I'll simply say question number three, so we can move on. Okay, and what I would like you to do to make it easier after the minute and I start calling the schools, all I need you to do is press and see the answers you have because the, the audience wouldn't see the, the answers. They would like to know because they are calculating as well and they want to know you are on point. Okay, because everyone has to be in accordance with the answer, the answer being the answer. Question number three. Jack, Jake, sorry, 
as a pile of mangoes when he shares them with his three sisters. He has one mango left over. If he shares them between his two brothers, he also has one mango left over. What is the least number of mangoes Jake could have? You can see it on your screen. Jake has a pile of mangoes. When he shares them with his three sisters, he has one mango left over. If he shares them between his two brothers, he also has one mango left over. What is the least number of mangoes Jake could have? Pens and pencils down. Thank you very much. And I will call it. I'll call it so that makes it easier by the schools. Atkinson, show me your answer, you have, because it make it make it easier. What number do you have here? Because seven is correct. You need to hear it properly. Berian Christian. Seven. No, you do show it. Eh? Yes, show. Until could it be three? Seven. Lighthouse Christian. No, could it be three is wrong. I seven. Thank you. We have Roosevelt Douglas. Okay. That's incorrect. Six they have. Let's go. And last school the Sufria primary. Seven. They are correct. I'm sorry, um could it be three? Your answer was five, right? So what do you have? Five. Five. That's Sorry. incorrect. Sorry. That's incorrect. Okay. So could it be three? Please erase the because please erase the board clearly. Because some of the, the um yes. Thank you. Question number four. Question number four. At what time did a movie begin if it was one hour? and 25 minutes long and ended at 9.20 p.m. Thank you. At what time did a movie begin if it was one hour and 25 minutes long? and ended at 9.20 p.m. Okay, put all this down.
Okay, let's start Atkinson Primary. Show me what you have. What time you have? Read it out so the people can hear too. 7.55 is correct. Let's continue. Barry and Christian. 7.55. Yeah. That's correct. Kulibi Street Primary. Good job. Lighthouse Christian Academy. 7.55 p.m. Correct. Roosevelt Douglas Primary. That's incorrect. Read it out. It's okay. You have to read it out. Super Air Primary. Let, let the 7.55 p.m. Turn it for the, the crowd to say it too. Yes. Good job. Round of applause for the students. Question number five. Mr. J. A hundred eggs for twenty three dollars and forty cents and sells them for twenty five cents each. Find the profit or loss he made and show the amount whether it's a profit or loss. Mr. James buys a hundred eggs for twenty three dollars and forty cents and sells them for 25 cents each. Find the profit or loss he made and show the amount whether it's a profit or loss. Please put all pencils down. Thank you very much. Let's go in the order. Atkinson Primary. Answer. $40 loss. No, that's incorrect. Berry and Christian Academy. $1.60 loss. I mean profit. That's correct. <laughs> Could it be street primary? Yes. $19.60 profit. No, that's incorrect. Okay, the profit part is correct, but the other part is incorrect. And the reason we're reading out, even if it's incorrect, for you to know what is happening. Okay? Lighthouse Christian Academy. $1.60 profit. Excellent. That's correct. Roosevelt Dollars Primary. $25 profit. Mm, no. That's incorrect. And Sufria Primary. Just keep your a profit of 16 cents. That's incorrect. I, think, I suspect you moved the, the zeros a different place. Okay, yes. All right. Thank you very much. Let's move on to question number six. Question number six. A rectangle is divided into exactly 12 identical squares arranged in three rows. 
What is the area of the rectangle if the perimeter of one square is 12 centimeters? Um, it will, it will, you can't skip it. That's number six on it. Yeah. Number seven. <laughs> so can you that? Okay, um, I have to redo that question. It has, a it has an error in it. So question number seven. So we'll about number six. Number seven, Rosa, Rosa sorry, has $2.20 made up of 25 cent coins and 10 cent coins. What is the smallest number of coins she can have all together? Rosa has two dollars and twenty cents coins, made up of twenty-five cent coins and ten cent coins. What is the smallest number of coins she can have all together? Could you place your pens, pencils down? Okay. Number seven. Let us start. Atkinson Primary School. What do you have? Read it. Ten coins. That's correct. And I suppose the George is on the audience. Borean Christian Academy. Ten coins. Excellent. Could it be Shri Primary? We have eight and two, so ten coins. Thank you very much. Ten coins. Lighthouse Christian Academy? Ten coins. Excellent. Roosevelt Douglas Primary? Ten coins. Excellent. And Super Primary? Ten coins. Show it. Show it. Ten. Two? Yeah. Ten. You see it on the other side? The other side has ten. No. Oh, okay, cool. Good. Thank you very much. Good job. Let's continue. All right. It says number eight, but actually we have done six questions. So two more will be added at the end to make the completed 15 questions altogether. Okay. This question is, um, this question is going to be shown on the screen because it's a diagram. I'll start reading. What is the area of the 2D shape shown? Thank you. What is the area of the 2D shape? And you can see the diagram. For your understanding, it's 5 centimeters from your left, 9 centimeters top on your right, 3 centimeters and below that is 4 centimeters.
Yes, please you up. Dong. Dong. Okay, question number eight. At Kingston Primary. Say the answer, please. 47 centimeters squared. That's incorrect. Let's continue. 45 centimeters squared. That's incorrect. Could it be Street Primary? 2 centimeters squared. That's also incorrect. Yes. Let's continue. Lighthouse Christian Academy. Seven centimeters squared. That is correct. Good job. Roosevelt Douglas. We said it at the end. Roosevelt Douglas Christian Academy. Oh, you said the answer. Sorry. Um, Roosevelt Douglas Primary. Sorry. 37. Show it. 37 centimeters squared. Okay, correct. They said that. <laughs> Suf uh, Primary. <laughs> See it? It's. Fifty-seven cent square. Okay, that is incorrect. Just leave leave your hand on it when you when you're saying it. His mic has a little glitch. Number nine, and you'll see it on. It's another question with a diagram. Look at the sequence of pentagonal numbers. What is the fifth pentagonal number? Look at of pentagonal numbers. What is the fifth pentagonal number? And if it, the numbers were 1, 5, 12, and 22. you kindly place your pencils down let us start again atkinson primary thirty five that's correct thirty five is correct and christian academy thirty five excellent that's correct could be three primary What do you say? Four? It's incorrect. What? L Lighthouse Christian Academy. Repeat. 35. Five is incorrect. 35. Oh. That's correct. Sorry. I probably said 25. I watched it. I said 35. Okay, Roosevelt Douglas Primary. 27. That's incorrect. Sufriel Primary. 35. You have it on both sides? 35. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much. Okay. Question number 10. It's another question if a diagram, a graph to be exact. Okay. What are the coordinates of point P, a uh, point B, sorry, on the graph? 
What are the coordinates of point B on the graph? Are you all seeing that clear? You all are seeing? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Put down your pencils. Let us go. We're starting with Atkinson Primary. What answer you have? One and two. Repeat that number. One and two. No, that's incorrect, my dear. Don't say it in the audience. Be quiet, please. Yes. Let's continue. Barry and Christian. Negative one, negative two. That's incorrect as what? well. No. <laughs> Could it be street primary? One, two. Thank you very much. That's correct. Lighthouse Christian Academy. If you finish it, they finish it. Do not do, do, do anything as yet. Let the do as yet. Do yeah. Do not try, do not Negative one two. That's correct. <laughs> Roosevelt Douglas Primary. Negative, Negative one two. That's correct. <laughs> Superior Primary. Neg Negative one two. That's correct. Um, please do not erase or write anything after, until, sorry, I should say, until all the competitors have shown their own. Okay, um, one of the teams said negative one, negative two, but he wrote, and I saw it, negative one with Mr. Gis attentiveness, negative one, two. So he was a bit confused, but he said negative one, negative two, but it's negative one, two he has. So you, you get a point, your 10 points, okay, all right? right? And be careful what you say. That's but it's what is written, eh? by the way. It's what is written. Okay? Yes. I'm letting them say it because it's their, when they say the answer, you can, you will, because you will not see it properly. Let's continue. Here is it. Oh. Number 11. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In. What is the largest number that can be made by rearranging the digits three eight one zero two nine. What is the largest number that can be made by rearranging the digits three eight one zero two?
Could you kindly place your pencils down? Okay. Atkinson Primary. And read out the number for me, please. Uh-huh, go ahead. 90, 983,210. Excellent. That's correct. Berean Christian Academy. Show and say. 983,210. Correct. Could it be Shoe Primary? 983,210. Okay, that's correct. Lighthouse Christian Academy. 983,210. Correct. Roosevelt Douglas. 983,210. Correct. Put it up, please. Put it up. up. Yes. Shoot. Yes. And you can show it. Thank you. And last but not least, Sufria Primary. 983,210. All right. Good job, students. You all got this question correct. Good job. Number 12. Iris up. We are going good so far. The competition is very tight. Remember, it's 10 points for correct answer. Question 12. Chrissy had $30. She gave one third of this to her sister and one quarter of the remainder to Elmer. How much money did Chrissy have left. Chrissy had $30. She gave one third of this to her sister and one quarter of the remainder to Elmer. How much money did Chrissy have left? Please, all to down and markers. Okay, let us start. Atkinson Primary. Fifteen dollars. Correct. Correct. Berrien Christian Berrien Christian Academy. Fifteen dollars. Thank you very much. Let me see. Yes. Willoughby Street Primary. Dollars. Thank you. Lighthouse Christian Academy. All right, wonderful. Roosevelt Dollars, Douglas Primary. Fifteen dollars. All right, good. Sufria Primary. Fifteen dollars. Thank you very much. Put them ease. Give them the encouragement they deserve. Typically, the students in this forum do actually well for national assessment as well as CXC. So I encourage them. 13, you'll see a picture on the screen. It says, how many different rectangles can be found in the shape below? Well, on the screen. 
How many different rectangles can be found in the shape below? pencils and markers. Question 13. Let us start at two rectangles. Incorrect. Let's move on. Burian Christian Academy. Four. Four is incorrect. Could it be three primary? Two is incorrect. Let's continue. Lighthouse Christian Academy. Three rectangle. Three is incorrect. I <laughs> Roosevelt Douglas Primary. Two rectangles. Two rectangles. I'm hearing the answer in the audience, interestingly. Yeah. But the students, I want to give me the answer. Superior Primary. I depending on you. Four rectangles. Four is incorrect. This is a question that you have to think outside the box, literally. You see in three in front of you. One, two, three. Then you put two together. Are you seeing the two you can put together? The first two. That's a rectangle. Then the other two are up here. You put them together. So that, that makes it five and then the entire shape itself is a rectangle so that makes it six yes very interesting question i actually love this question we have to think outside the box literally question number 14. even the audience was test i believe some of the high schoolers will give me some answers they were not sure yeah. 14. Find the missing number that makes these fraction, fractions equal. Find the missing number that makes these fractions equal. Please be quiet because we do not want answers from the audience until it is done. Please place your pencils and markers down. Question number 14. Let's start. Atkinson Primary. B. 
15 over 20 equals to 3 over 4. Thank you very much. For uh, Berian Christian Academy. The missing number is 3. Correct. Could it be Shri Primary? 15 over 20 equals 3 over 4. Excellent. Lighthouse Christian Academy. Number is 3 over 4. Thank you very much. Roosevelt Douglas Primary. 3 over 4. Thank you very much. Correct. Sufria Primary. 3 quarters. Thank you very much. Which is three, we are three over four. Thank you. Interestingly, all of them said it differently. <laughs> but the answer is three. That's correct. Thank you very much. Fifteen. What is 126 divided by nine? What is... 126 divided by 9. All pencils and markers down. Atkinson Primary. The answer is 14 remainder free. 14 remainder free. That's incorrect. Yes, the Berrien answer, Christian Academy. The answer is 14. Correct. Kulabi Street Primary. Correct. Lighthouse Christian Academy. 14. Correct. Roosevelt Douglas Primary. 14. Correct. Superior Primary. 14. Excellent. The answer is indeed 14. Okay. Question 16. And the reason we are on the, um, we're going to reach up to 17. Two numbers were, two questions were actually removed. So we just counting it in that particular order. Okay? The extras. My chairman says we stop in at 13. That's the questions for now. If there is an event, there is a tie. A question will be given to the students and they have to come and work it out and explain to us how they got the answer. Event of a tie. See this part. <laughs> okay, tally up all the, all the uh, points. Give us a few moments and we will get back to you with the school that won. Hopefully there is no tie, but there is in the event that there is a tie.
Oh, you can put it in. Okay. Welcome back. You know, we have a lot of mathematicians in the room, so we don't waste time to tabulate. Yes. Interestingly, when I come to my class, I ask the students if they want to hear the good news or the bad news. They, they like to say they, like, they want to hear the bad news first. I tell them it's good news and better news. Afterwards. <laughs> okay. The good news is that all the students did a wonderful job, so give them a round of applause. Please, mathematics is very important. Mental maths matters. You all did a lovely job. And the two schools have, and that's the better news, two schools have a tie. There's a tie. Hence, there will be a tiebreaker. So what's going to happen, we have a nice little performance going to take place. So that gives the tiebreaker will be done right after that performance. So that gives the primary schools a chance to relax and compete again. But I'll give you the scores so that you know the schools that are tied and the other schools that came out third, fourth, fifth and sixth. The, the position don't matter in a sense that everybody performed to their best of their ability. I appreciate and I love to see, as I was telling my colleague, I love to see intelligence at work. Okay? So let's promote that. Let's work towards our students doing well. Okay? Let's start. I think I should just give the tie the students who got or oh, we'll have a drum roll. Okay. Atkinson Primary, 80 points. <laughs> we'll go in alphabetical order. Berrien Christian Academy, 115 points. Kulibishri Primary, 90 points. Excuse me a minute. All right. Just a little mention, the tie is for second place, by the way, not first. Yeah, I really wanted it to be for first. I didn't. Let's continue. Lighthouse Christian, 145 points. Roosevelt Douglas Primary, 90 points. And last but not least, the gentleman next to me, Sufre Primary, 115 points. So, the winner of the Maths Power Contest is Chris Lighthouse Christian Academy. And the tiebreaker will be done after the performance between the Berrien Christian Academy and the Superior Primary School. So it will be done after. Thank you very much. You all did a wonderful job. I'll not stop to say that. Please continue loving and appreciating mathematics. It's a passion. Continue it. It's going to lead you very far. Thank you. Let me hear a big round of applause again for our students, please. Big, 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 big round of applause. Come on. You did a very good job. It's not easy being up there. All right. At this time, we have a performance by the Pierre Charles Secondary School, on which we will do 
prepare for the break, the tiebreaker. So the prayer child secondary school, can you please come forward and do your performance, please? Thank you. Yes, yeah, yes, yes.
Okay, in the meantime, if you, um, we have, you can, you can have one, two, one, one, two, test one, two. Test one, two, test one, two,
Put your hands together one more time for the Petra Secondary School performance. Take it for me, please. I didn't write it down now. Is that so fair now? Okay, let us welcome the Minister of Education, Mrs. Octavia Alfred. Give a round of applause, please. Thanks for your presence, Miss Honorable. <laughs> yes, welcome back, everybody. Remember, we have to solve a problem. We have a tie for second place, so we need to break that tie. It's between the Sufria Primary School, so I need the peer to come back. Or if they want to make a change, they can, but come back, please. And the Berrien Christian Academy. Yes. Please. And I'm going to tell you something about me personally. I am very pleased to see the number of young men participating in that competition. You all don't know. Trust me, you don't know. Oh, no, I'm feeling ecstatic about that. And we are four at the front. No. Okay? Um, this tiebreaker is very simple. You, are, you have your whiteboards. What you need to do now, when you get the answer, you need to simply press the button for the speaker and say the answer that you have. Yes. So the school that gets the correct answer first, it has to be correct. So if the one school goes first and get it incorrect, and the next school has the correct answer, they can say it right after. Okay, do we understand what I just said? I'll repeat. Please listen attentively. If you have the correct answer, you simply press on the mic and say what the answer is. Okay, the school who gets it correct would be the second place school and obviously the, the school that didn't will be third place. Thank you. This is a speed wrong. So the first school that can present the answer will go ahead and present the answer. Okay? So the first school, you're given the question, and the first school that presented present the answer will give you an opportunity to give the answer. Okay? Write your answer on the board. Okay? Right. Right. So write your answer and then say it. 
No, say it. You'll show it to me after. While you're saying it. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> you all are ready? The audience is ready? All right, please. Thank you. How many two centimeters by two centimeter squares are needed to cover a larger square with side eight centimeters? And you can see it on the screen. How many two centimeters by two centimeter squares are needed to cover a larger square with a side of eight centimeters? Sixteen. That is totally correct. Excellent job. Wow. And I was about to say there is no timer, but you didn't need anything. Excellent job. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. We appreciate your participation in this competition. There are no losers in this competition. You all are all winners. And I take that, take that to heart. The nine, the, that doesn't matter. Nice. But you all making my day longer, but more interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, we had two schools for third and fourth place was tied. Well, third place, I have to say it like that. I'm um, fourth place, sorry, I have to say it like that. So the fourth and fifth tied again. So we have to decide on a tiebreaker. So we're going to use a similar process. Remember, we had two schools with 115 and two schools with 90. You know, we mouse people, we like to make things very fair and square. Okay? Okay, so we have the Kulibishri Primary School. Please come to your area. And we have the Roosevelt Douglas Primary School. Please clap for the students. Yeah. Okay, pay attention to the rules. It's a speed wrong. There's no timer. All you do now, if you have the answer, you press on the mic and you see what the answer is. You do your, your steps and you're working on the whiteboard provided. But if you know the answer from straight away, you could see it. Now, if you get it incorrect, the next school can try the, to work it out and get the answer. Okay, are you all ready? Okay. W wonderful. The perimeter of a square, not this one. Apologies. Let me read it again. And the question will pop on, your, on the screen momentarily. What is the largest prime number between 140 and 150? 147. Repeat. 147. That's incorrect. So the, they have an opportunity. 143. To, both are incorrect. What? What then? The correct answer is actually 149. Okay? What? So there is another question I'm going to give you, so prepare yourself.
you all are trying to finish the bank of questions. It's looking like I have to go in my brain and get questions. But I have one on the, on the sheet. The perimeter, you all are ready? Before I start, sorry. You all are ready? Okay, wonderful. The perimeter of a square is 220 centimeters. The perimeter of a square is 220 centimeters. What is the length of each side? Fifty-four centimeters. I said fifty-four is incorrect. Fifty-four centimeters squared. No. <laughs> he said, he said, <laughs> once you have to get, what is the answer you have, Sufria? Yeah. Recite it as well. 54 centimeters squared. Before them said 54. That's incorrect. The correct answer is 55 centimeters squared. Where did they get that? Four, four. Wow. Wonderful. Let's try again. You all are ready? Okay. That's getting very interesting. Which solid has two triangular faces, three rectangular faces, six vertices, and nine edges? I repeat. Which solid has two triangular faces, three rectangular faces, six vertices, and nine edges? Rectangular prism. Repeat your answer. Rectangular prism. No, that's incorrect. Please try. What? A triangle. Which one? A prism? A triangular prism. That is totally right. Good job. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very much, contestants. Very good. The competition was tight. Okay. We appreciate the tiebreakers and the, the end of the program for the primary school. You all did a wonderful job. Please give them a round of applause. Trust me, being up there and participating is not easy for the students to do, and I believe they are doing an excellent job. Thank you. Do have a blessed day. That is it for my shift as the judge for the primary school. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, let's show appreciation to Mr. Graham by giving a big round of applause, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Graham, for a very good job. But the job was well done. All right. Now we are now going into the secondary segment of the competition. But before we do this, we would like to have the Minister of Education give a few words or remarks to us. Madam Minister. Good morning, everybody. I recognize all the officers from the Ministry of Education, Mr. Vidal, who's coordinating this activity. I see representatives from the sponsors, teachers, students, Good morning. That not a good time for me to speak to you. Just settle down a little and trust me, I'll be out of there in six minutes. Yes. 
This morning, I say to us that maths isn't just an important subject in school. It's essential for many of your daily tasks. You likely use it every day to perform real life skills like grocery shopping, cooking, and tracking finances. What makes math special is that it's a universal language, a powerful tool with the same meaning across the globe. Though languages divide the world, numbers unite us. Math allows us to work together towards new innovations and ideas. Learning even the basic math is important and significantly improve your family's quality. You simply can't make it through a day, not a day, without using some of your basic maths. A person needs to understand the maths of measurement and fraction to cook and bake. And you, have your measure, you must know your measurement for that outfit you want to make. How much vegetables you must eat how many jumping jacks to keep fit? Two liters of water I must drink daily, but eight hours of sleep you must get nightly. Maths to check when is my birthday. Is it on a Sunday, a Friday, or a Monday? The phase of the moon, will it rain soon? The height of this mountain, the speed of the hurricane. How many more years before you can wear that red lipstick? And in just a few years, I need a walking stick. Maps here, maps there, maps everywhere. Maps to cal calculate when you should leave home to arrive at school on time. Maps to ensure that you are still early, even when the traffic moves slowly. The size of your new room, will the bed fit there or will the bed fit there? Turn it at this angle, and by the way, how much paint do you need for your bedroom walls? So now I have you all, all tangled up and feeling fantastic, all because I'm speaking about mathematics. Got you. Mathematic knowledge is very connected to many other not so obvious benefits. A strong foundation in maths translates into increased understanding and regulations of your emotions. It improves memory and better problem-solving skills. Math offers more opportunities beyond school. When you apply it in real life, when you apply it in real life scenarios, you can't be easily fooled. Though many students sit in math's class wondering, when we'll ever use these things that we are learning? But we know in time to come, it is your math skill that will be the reason for your earning. Basic maths is necessity, but even abstract maths can help with your critical thinking skills. Even you choose not to pursue a STEM-style career, math promotes healthy brain function. We know if we use it, we better use it or we lose it. That's what we hear, and in maths, it's no exception. Maths improves problem-solving skills. Word problems teach us how to pull out the important information, then find the solution. Tools will replace your workbook later in life, but the problem-solving skills will remain the same. When students understand problem-solving more deeply, they can decode facts and solve issues more easily. It's not trick or magic, but real-life solutions are found with maths and logic. A strong understanding of math's concept means more than just number sense. It helps us to see the pathway to a solution even when things are tense. Equations and word problems need to be examined before determining the best method for solving them. And in many cases, there are more than one way to get the right answer. It's no surprise that logical reasoning and analytic thinking improve alongside with math skills. Local, logical skills are necessary 
at all levels of mathematical education. So, practicing maths has been shown to improve a lot of skills. This is because maths problem requires us to bend our mind and be creative. And there are many careers with concepts that will need you to do maths. And now we are seeing everything, not just, some of them are basic, you need it, like architects and accountants and scientists. But there are some of them, like statisticians, data scientists, not just STEM subjects, but even teaching and nursing. Many professions use math skills every day to complete their jobs, professionals. Some people use maths to analyze their finances. Graphic designers use maths to figure out the appropriate skill and proportion in their design. No matter what career path you choose, with maths on your CV, you can never lose. And it is for this reason, the Ministry of Education is playing its role in developing our human resource so that our people will be ready to fit in the numerous job opportunities that come with the new international airport, the geothermal project, opportunities in construction, tourism, the blue and green economy, and the digital economy. I highly commend all our officers for your efforts in pushing hard for mathematics, science, and skills. But it's about maths today. You know, research is showing that the part of your brain which is used to solve maths also controls some parts of your emotion. The results showed that the better people were at numerical calculation is the better they were at regulating fear and anger. So strong math skills may even help to treat anxiety and depression. Though you are not managing your finances, students, you're not managing your finances now because all you do is buy and spend. But later in life, your mathematics skills are going to make a massive difference. Budgeting and saving will not stress you out because if you cannot afford it, you will leave it out. Maths will help you to understand loans and interest as you grow into adulthood. And then you can decide if you want to have the finest, fanciest car in the neighborhood. Maps sharpen your memory. Learning maps helps us to remember. As we memorize like a trick, when you multiply by 10, add a zero. And people who do maps, they persevere. I can do it. They try one thing, didn't work, try the next thing. Because perseverance, I can do it, you can do it, we can do it. These are the words, they are mark markers of our growth. And it's a point of pride for us. When a person loves maths, he does not give up. He tries this and he tries that and he tries something else. He changes a number. And there's a rush of excitement when you master a new math concept and use it to solve a problem in another subject. I'm wrapping it down. Many students experience roadblock throughout their maths education. Sometimes the pace of the class moves a bit faster than the student can keep up with. Or the concepts are too abstract and difficult for them to wrap around their minds. Therefore, a good teaching style with plenty of practice, support, encouragement, and feedback is essential to the high-quality math education. The government of Dominica knows the importance of maths, and therefore, the Ministry of Education has programs in place and activities like Maths Power, workshop and training for teachers, the Ministry of Education continues to work with all schools to set the next generation up for success with the right tools that will help them to learn maths. We extend our sincere appreciation to all the sponsors of this activity. Put your hands together for them. All. And I hope they will be calling you out as we go along so your names can be called out at least three times again before we end. I take this opportunity to congratulate all the students who have participated in the activity. You all are going to do well as adults. I thank the teachers who work to prepare students and the staff of the Ministry of Education for your work. Let's be enthusiastic about maths year-round, not just in preparation for competitions. Let's be advocates for the subjects. Let's raise the standard of maths through good, good teaching 
and learning practices. God bless you. Jesus loves you and I love you too. Good morning and let the games continue. Thank you very much, Honorable Octavia Alfred. All right. I hope you take note of what she said, boys and girls. Okay, we are not giving up on mathematics. We are going to work hard at it and become proficient, excellent mathematicians in Dominica. All right. Thank you very much again, Honorable Minister. We will take a five minutes break. I realize some of you here are restless a little bit. There is snacks at the bar, at the back. Take a quick snack. I'll give you five minutes to come back to begin the secondary segment. Let, let me inform you, the snacks are for the students, the participants. All right, if we have extras, we will give to the, or the, or the, or the audience, the rest of the audience. But the snacks are for the students. The teachers, please identify the students that are participating and let us, you know, yes. Yes. Let's, so teachers, please find out. The students, these snacks is primarily for the participants. We have extras. We have extras. We give them to you. Okay? So that's why well, we have waters and stuff there.
Okay. Can the students who are participating in the secondary school competition now come to get your snacks, please, at the back?
Okay, time is up. We are going to get ready to keep us, to keep us um, in the mood and get us together. We're going to call back on the PHR Secondary School to give us one number to keep us, get, bring us together back again. So the PHR Secondary School is going to perform for us now. Let's welcome the PHRs Secondary School. Give them a round of applause, please. Come on, put your hands together for them. Come on, a bigger hand than that. That's poor. Come on, put your hands together, everybody. Let's welcome the PHRs Secondary School. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, PHR Secondary School, for this wonderful performance you have presented here this morning or this afternoon. We are about to begin the secondary school segment of the competition. So we're going to call the names of the students. The school, as we call you, please come up and take your seat where your name tag, um, you see your name tag, okay? The Castlebrew Secondary School. Put your hands together for everyone, please. The Castlebrew Secondary School. And they go, and that is um, Anthea, John Charles, and Jeremy Roll. Okay, Dominica Grammar School. <laughs> Jerusa Olivache and Isabella Branca. <laughs> Convent High School. <laughs> Serena Harris. Amika Labadi. Nice huh? Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Emmanuel Joseph. Kijane Peltier. Portsmouth Secondary School. Kennelly Baron. And Anilia Aaron. And finally, not least, we have the St. Mary's Academy. <laughs> Otis Nesty and Jason Hang. Welcome, boys and girls. We're going to ask you right now to buzz in so that we know that your buzzers are working. So we, I call your school. When I call your school, you buzz in. All right? Yes, very awake. Okay. Cassie Bruce, buzz in, please. CBSS. Thank you very much. Dominica Grammar School. Thank you very much. Convent High School. Thank you very much. Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Thank you. Crossmouth Secondary School. And uh, finally, St. Mary's Academy. Thank you very much. Let me give you a trick. Let me tell you something. If you buzz in before we put the buzzer up there, the buzzer is going to deduct two seconds of response time. So that's why you may find that you, when you press it, press it, press it, press it, it's not going through, it's because you buzzed in too early. So if you buzz in too early, you buzz in only when you see the buzzer is up there. If you see get ready, up there and you buzz in, it's going to subtract um, some seconds of response. Okay, now I'm seeing a cartridge, an army of St. Mary's Academy boys in front of here. This is a problem for us. Because you have to promise us there'll be no shouting, no talking, no distraction. The students, are you going to promise me that? You promise me that? If not, I'm going to ask you to scatter somewhere else because we don't want any disturbance, please. So you're in front, be quiet, and just support. It. All right. So at this time, we're going to ask our judge, Miss. I know as Daniel from the Alpha. Waldron Secondary School. Miss Daniel. Give her a round of applause, please. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. And welcome to this segment. 
I'm excited to be here. That's a very good idea. Welcome, students. I'm going to read the rules for you this afternoon. Okay, a team is comprised of three competitors selected by each school for the contest. However, two competitors will take part in the competition, while one competitor is allowed to be on standby in case a competitor falls sick during the contest. First rule, competitors must be attired in their complete uniform. Papers, pencils, markers, that's rule number two, and mini whiteboards will be provided for each team to write and display the answers. The competition is made up of two segments. The first segment is called the speed round or mental math round. Competitors are not allowed to write or use paper and pencil to work out answers in this segment. All calculators, sorry, all calculations must be done in your head. In the second segment, we have what we call the problem solving round. Competitors will be allowed to use paper and pencil to work out the answers. Rule number four. Competitors must allow each question to be read completely before answering. A question will be read once for the mental math segment, only once for the mental math segment, and after that you will buzz in. For the problem solving segment, the question will be read twice and displayed on the screen in front here. Team members are allowed to confer and work together on each question. Five, each team is allowed to attempt each question once in segment one. If the question is answered incorrectly by a team member, a new question will be given. Competitors will be given 30 seconds to answer questions in segment one and one minute in segment two. When a team member buzzes in, he or she must answer the question immediately and completely. So as soon as you buzz in, you are allowed to answer the question. You confer before, then you buzz in, and you answer the question immediately. For the mental math segment, any team with three consecutive wrong answers will be penalized with a deduction of two points from their total score. That's not going to happen. So, Number nine. Calculators may only be allowed for segment two. Number 10, competitors are not allowed to use cell phones during the contest. 11, the audience shall remain silent during the competition. Okay, audience? And finally, number 12, every team member must abide by all the rules and regulations of the contest. Okay, are we ready now? We have checked the buzzers. All the buzzers are working. So, you can hold your buzzer in your hand. We are going to begin the first segment. Remember, you confer first, you buzz in, and immediately after you buzz in, you must answer the question. Question number one. What is 55.98 rounded off to one decimal place? Cassie Bruce Secondary. Sixty. 
That's incorrect. The correct answer is 56.0. Question number two. What is the sum of the first six counting numbers? SMA. Sixteen. That's incorrect. It's twenty one. Number three. What is the difference between forty five point zero five and twenty one? DGS? For um twenty-four point zero one. That's incorrect. It's twenty-four point zero five. Okay. Let's relax. We can do this. Come on. Okay. So we're going on to question number five. John left home. Sorry, question number four. There are 15 people in a room. If six persons leave the room, what fraction remains in its simplest form? PSS? That is correct. Three-fifths is the correct answer. Three-fifths. Okay, working now. Let's go. Question number five. John left home at 8.05 a.m. and reached his destination 95 minutes later. What time did he arrive at his destination? DGS? 9.40 a.m. That's correct. <laughs> Question number six. What is the perimeter of a regular hexagon with the length of a side measuring seven centimeters? PSS? 42 centimeters. That is correct. <laughs> Number seven. What are the three angles in a right angled isosceles triangle? Ninety degrees, forty-five degrees. Wait, wait, wait. Let me call you first Sorry. before you answer. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Dominica Grammar School. Ninety degrees, forty-five degrees, and forty-five degrees. That is correct. <laughs> Question number eight. What is the size of the angle at a point? On a horizontal line. PSS? 180 degrees. That is correct. 180 degrees. Remember, yeah. Okay, question number nine. What is the smallest prime number that is bigger than 500? PSS? 
501. That's incorrect. It's 503. Question number 10. What is half of three quarters of 24? PSS? Three. That's incorrect. The correct answer is nine. Three quarters of 24 is 18, half of 18 is 9. Number 11. The distance from the earth to the sun is about 150 million kilometers. What is this distance in standard form? Scientific notation. One, one point five. PSS. One point five times ten to the power of six. That's incorrect. It's one point five times ten to the power of eight. It's one hundred and fifty million. Million is already six. Number 12, what is the product of 84 and 11? DGS? 95. That's incorrect, it's product. Product is multiply. The correct answer is 924. Question number 13. Audience. Thank you. Which square number is between 150 and 190? PSS? 169. 169 is correct. Okay, we shall continue. Number 14. A box can hold six eggs. How many boxes are needed for 45 eggs? Cassibro Secondary. You're supposed to answer immediately. We did not press. Okay. It's a 
didn't press the button. And, and it wasn't? It wasn't? Yeah. It was accident, I don't know. Okay, um, the buzzers are very sensitive, all right? So do not keep your finger on the buzz, all right? Bef um, during the time of the reading of the question. Keep your finger off the buzz, and as soon as you finish reading the question, you see the buzzer says, buzz in, then you do that. Remember, there's a, there is a, a penalty, a reduction in, in the time if you buzz before a time. You reduce your buzzing time to avoid doing that. Buzzing only when the buzzer says buzz in. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question number 15. What is... 18 over 25 as a percentage. PSS? 62%. It's 72%. Your answer is incorrect. Next question. Okay, number 16. An iPod costs $300. What is the price of the iPod, sorry, pod, if you get a 15% discount? DGS? It is... $255. That is correct. <laughs> Question number 17. What is seven ifs as a decimal? PSS? 0 0.875. That is correct. <laughs> Question number 18. What are seven nines and eight ones? DGS? Um. Seven, nine, and eight ones are um, sem 71. 71 is the correct answer. Wait until they say buzzer is on. Now you buzz. Remember, you have to wait until it says buzzer is on before you buzz in. That's when I'm finished reading the question. Until you see buzzers on, and then you buzz in. If you buzz in before, you'll not see it appearing. You have to wait yeah, until it says buzzers the, on. Like you need milliseconds up here, like pressing, so it probably able to see. Okay, question number 19. What is 0.2% of 20? 
Convent High School. 0.2% of 20 is 4. What? 0.4, I mean. Wait, no. The correct answer is 0 0.04. So it's incorrect. Question number 20. What are the next two numbers in the sequence? 14, 21, 28, 35. DGS? 42 and 49. That is correct. Question number 21. What is one half plus one third? SMA. One half. No, that's incorrect. The correct answer is five six. Question number 22. What is the highest common factor among 24, 32, and 60? ITSS. That's incorrect. The common factor is 4. 6 cannot go into 32. Number 23. There are 23 students in a class. 15 play netball and 18 play basketball. How many students play both? Sports, SMA, three students. That's incorrect. The correct answer is 10. Question number 25. What is the cube root of 100? And twenty five Convent High School. The cube root of one twenty five is five. That is correct. Our final question in this segment. The audience is a little bit too loud. Thank you. Question number 25. What is 10 to the power of 7? PSS? 1 billion. No. 10 million. That is the correct answer. Thank you very much. That's the end of round one. Let's give the students a round of applause. End of wrong one. We are going to now prepare for round or segment two. For this segment, you will need the whiteboard provided for you and your marker. You will need something to erase, a duster, erase, a eraser, sorry. For this segment, I will read the question twice. It will also be displayed on the screen. You have one minute to answer the question. You do your working on one side, you put your answer at the back. When I call time, you will immediately put down your markers 
and put up your whiteboards. That's what I wonder, eh? When time is called, you'd immediately stop writing and put up your whiteboards. Remember, you have one minute to answer the question. A calculator is being provided. Okay, before we move on to round segment two, we'll get the scores for segment one, so you can know where your status is. Okay, Cassie Bruce Secondary. We have zero points. Dominica Grammar School, 25 points. Unvent High School, Five points. Isaiah Thomas Secondary, you have zero points. Portsmouth Secondary School, you have 25 points. And St. Mary's Academy, you have zero points. Okay, the second segment, much more points this time, so it's still anybody's game. You get 10 points per question this time. So let's see. Competition on. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to read the question twice. Question number one. A meter of fencing wire costs $50. How much does it cost to fence a rectangular yard with dimensions of 10 meters by 7 meters. Please try to write your answers largely so I can see. Okay, time is, time is up. Put down your pens and put up your whiteboards. Everybody put up your whiteboards, please. Answer is seventeen hundred dollars. All of schools have the correct answer. <laughs> Question number two A factory employs two hundred and eighty persons. If five percent are laid off. How many persons remain employed? A factory employs 280 persons. 
If 5% are laid off, how many persons remain employed? Okay, time is up. Put up your cards, everyone. Okay, the, the correct answer is 266. Um, all schools except for content, has it correct? Question number three. What is an algebraic expression that can be used to represent the perimeter of the following shape? An algebraic expression that can be used to represent the following shape. The perimeter of the following shape. Okay, time is up. Please put up your cards, everyone. Okay, we have many different answers. Okay. SME? SME is correct. 6X minus 4. Minus 4. Okay. PSS. Is also correct as another version. Um, the ITSS is incorrect. Um, convent is incorrect. It must be minus, not plus. Incorrect. Correct. Cassibrus secondary. So we had SMA, PSS, Cassibrew Secondary. Plus one. No, that's the correct answer. I don't want you to say minus four. Because what? I erased it, so. Excuse me? What answer you had? Six X. Six X plus four. 
plus four. It's supposed to be minus four. You Six sure? Six X minus four. <laughs> <laughs> Six X minus four. Okay. So question number four. If fifteen plus three X equals forty eight, what is X? If 15 plus 3x equals to 48, what is x? Okay, time is up. Everybody put up your boards, please. X is equal to 11. All the schools has the correct answer. Question number five. A line segment is 9.8 centimeters in length. How far from one end of it is the point where its perpendicular bisector meets the line? How far from one end would the perpendicular bisector meet the line? Okay, time is up. Please put up your boards. Leave your, leave your boards up. Huh? The correct answer is 4.9 centimeters. So, leave it up, leave it up, leave it up, leave it up. Right. So, Cassie Bruce has it. Dominica Grammar School has it. Convent has it. PSS has it. And SME has it. Question number six. What is the perimeter of the quadrant shown if the radius is seven centimeters? You are to take pi as 22 over seven. What is the perimeter of the quadrant shown if the radius is seven centimeters? Pi is equal to 22 over seven. Please remember your units.
Ensure you have your proper units, please. Time is up. Please put up your boards. The correct answer is 25 centimeter. That's PSS. Only PSS has it. Question number seven. The point negative two comma three is reflected in the y-axis. What are the coordinates of its image, the point negative two comma negative three is reflected in the y axis. What are the coordinates of its image? Okay, time is up. Please lift up your cards, everyone. Okay. So elder schools except for PSS. Yeah. Yes, yeah, all except for PSS had it correct. Question number eight. Correct answer in bracket two comma negative three. Question number eight. A rectangular field is 40 meters long and 30 meters wide. What is the length of a diagonal path joining one corner of the field to another? A rectangular field is 40 meters long and 30 meters wide. What is the length of a diagonal path joining one corner of the field to another? Don't forget your units as well. Time is up. Please lift your boards, everyone. The correct answer is 50 meters. 
everybody except um, ITSS has it. Question number nine. The sum of the ages of Peter and Beverly is 43 years. Peter is seven years older than Beverly. How old is Peter? The sum of the ages of Peter and Beverly is 43 years. Peter is seven years older than Beverly. How old is Peter? All right, time is, time is up. Please lift up your cards. The correct answer is 25 years old. Everybody except convent has it. Okay, for this question, you have to observe the diagram. The first five triangular numbers are shown in the picture on the screen. What is the tenth triangular number? What is the tenth triangular number? Okay, time is up. Please lift your boards, everyone. The correct answer is 55. All schools are correct. <laughs> Question number 11. It takes two and a quarter minutes to gift wrap a package and a further half a minute to label. How long does it take to wrap and label 10 such packages? It takes two and a quarter minutes to gift wrap a package and a further half minute to label it. How long does it take to wrap and label 10 such packages?
time is up. Please put up your boards, everyone. The correct answer is, your card is up. I'm not seeing it. The correct answer is 27 and a half minutes or 27 minutes, 30 seconds, yes. So lift it up, lift it up. Let me call the schools. So Dominica Grammar School, Convent, Cassie Bruce, I'm sorry, ITSS down there, and uh, SME. No, but uh, applause, please, people. Thank you. <laughs> Question number 12. Rick wishes to buy a game for $80. If he gets paid $11 a day, how many days does he have to work to buy the cartridge and have $8 pocket change? Rick wishes to buy a game for $80. If he gets paid $11 a day, how many days does he have to work to buy the cartridge and have eight dollars pocket change. Okay, time is up. Please put up your cards, everyone. The correct answer is eight days. All schools have it correct. <laughs> Question number 13. A flight leaves New York at 22 hours, 25 minutes, and arrives in Frankfurt at 0710 the next day. How long was the flight? Flight leaves New York at 2225 and arrives in Frankfurt at 710 the next day. How long was the flight? Okay, an announcement. PZ292, please move your vehicle. Somebody wants to leave and you are blocking. So PZ292, the owner, please move your vehicle so that we can pass. PZ292. Okay, time is up.
please put up your cards. Correct answer is 8 hours and 45 minutes. Please lift it up. Let me see who has the correct answers. 8 hours and 45. So, Cartibu Secondary has it. Grammar School has it. PSS has it. And SME has it. Question number 14, we are coming down. That's the last two questions. Question number 14, expand 2, and then in bracket, there's x minus 3, close the bracket, and a minus 4 on the outside. Expand Expand and simplify, it should be. Expand and simplify. Expand and simplify. Expand and simplify. Okay, time is up. Please lift up your boards. I'm not seeing. I'm not. You're showing the, the screen. You're showing the screen your answer. Need to see your answer. You think it's four, I'm not seeing your answer. Okay, the correct answer is 2x minus 10. Lift up your card still so I can call the schools. So, SMA has it, PSS has it, um, ITSS has it, Convent has it, that's it. And the final question in this segment, the final question, to pass her course, Jane must have an average of at least 55%. She has scored 43%, 71%, and 49% in three tests to date. What is the minimum she must score in the fourth and last test to ensure that she gets a passing grade. To pass her course, Jane must have an average of at least 55%. She has scored 43%, 71%, and 49% in three tests to date. What is the minimum she must score in the fourth and last test to ensure she gets a passing grade.
Okay, time is up. Please lift up your boards, everyone. Okay, the correct answer is 57%. Lift it up. Let me call the schools, please. Okay, so SMA, PSS, ITSS, Convent. You got the correct answer. You not me the board with me. And Cassie Bruce Secondary. I don't think your board was down. I thought your board was down. Okay, so this is the end of this segment. Let's give every, all the schools a round of applause, please. Thank you, participants. You did very well. We await the, the scores.
Okay, so the results are in. It was a tight competition in the second segment. So, the final scores are in sixth position, we have the Isaiah Thomas Secondary with 100 points. In fifth position, we have the Convent High School with 105 points. In fourth position, we have the Cassie Bruce Secondary School, 120 points. And then we have our top three. Our top three schools. In third position, we have the Dominica Grammar School with 135 points. In second position, we have the St. Mary's Academy with 140 points. And in first position, we have the Portsmouth Secondary School with 130, 50, sorry, points. 155 points, sorry. 155 points. Congratulations to all the schools. Let's give everybody a round of applause. Thank you very much. You worked hard today. Hats off to you. Special commendations to the teachers who got them ready. I have now hand over to Mr. Vital. Okay, at this time, this event would not come to this point if we had not have the support of our sponsors. And today we have some of them here with us. We're going to give them an opportunity to just say a word, just a word. So we're going to call on the National Bank of Dominica representative at this time to say a word to us. Thank you very much. And by the way, they are our gold sponsors. Give them a big hand, big hand please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to the Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence. Mr. Jeffrey Blaise, Chief Education Officer, teachers, students, and all those joining us via social media or radio. Good afternoon. As we gather here today for the Math Power Contest Finals and Closing Ceremony, it is with immense joy and pride that we extend our warmest congratulations to all the schools who participated. A special congratulations to our finalists, and please give them a round of applause. They all did amazing today. Your performance today was truly commendable. To the runners-up and the ultimate winners, the Portsmouth Secondary School and the Lighthouse Christian Academy, your achievements exemplify the power of perseverance critical thinking, and problem-solving skills. Your success not only brings honor to your schools, but also serves as an inspiration to other young persons like yourself. The National Bank of Dominica Limited takes great pride in sponsoring this contest year after year. We believe in the transformative power of education and the importance of nurturing young minds. By investing in initiatives like the Math Power Contest, we aim to foster a culture of learning, innovation, and excellence that will shape the future leaders of our society. 
Therefore, I urge all schools to embrace and promote opportunities like the math for contest. Let us inspire our students to unlock their mathematical potential, to embrace challenges with confidence, and to envision a future where they are not just consumers, but creators of knowledge. In closing, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to the Ministry of Education for this collaboration, as well as to all the participants, teachers, and organizers who have made this event possible. Together, let us continue to inspire and empower the next generation of mathematicians, innovators, and problem solvers. Once again, congratulations to all the participants. Your hard work and dedication have not gone unnoticed, and we cannot wait to see the incredible contributions you will make in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Nicholas, for this um, word of encouragement, particularly to our students this afternoon. So we want to also just recognize our other sponsors among us today. We have the Central Cooperative Credit Union. Can you give them a applause, please? Springfield Trading. Come, put hands together for them, please. We Church, HV We Church. Fine Foods, the National Credit Union, Asta Fans, Fine Foods, and DBS Radio. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, we're going to call on the primary school students. Where are you? Come up. Come close, please. Come close up. We're going to be awarding our students at this time. All right. Can we ask the, the National Bank representative, can you come forward, please? Yes, Mr. Daniel, you can start right up there. Okay, we start with the primary school. In six position in the National Mass Power Competition. Let's put our hands together for the Atkinson Primary School. In the fifth position, we have the Kulibistri Primary School.
Thank you very much. In fourth position, the Roosevelt Douglas Primary School. In third position, we have the Superior Primary School, <laughs> represented by Judah Davis and Eldon Jabaptis. And in second place, none other than the Biren Christian Academy, represented by Kyle Simon and Lathan Loder. Kunin, okay. Kunin. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in first position, we have the Lighthouse Christian Academy. <laughs> Davani Pascal and Irving George. All right, our champion. Oh, wait, wait. In third place, we have the school awards. In third place, we have the Sufrere Primary School. Hmm? Yeah. The, teacher, the teacher can come a place for this one. And she has been working very hard with the students all throughout the competition. And in second place, the primary school mathematics competition, we have the Birian Christian Academy and we ask the teacher to come forward, please. And today, our champion school in the mathematics primary school competition, none other than the Lighthouse Christian Academy. 
And I can tell you a little bit of history. This is the second time they are taking this prize. The second time in the mass power competition. Okay, now we are going to the secondary school, secondary school at this time. And we would like the minister at this time to give this, to, to come and give the students the hand over the trophies, please. The Minister of Education. We'll call back the uh, NBD in a while. Okay, we're going to continue. In sixth position, we have the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. <laughs> Represented by Emmanuel Joseph and Kijani Pelke. And in fifth place, we have the Convent High School, represented by Serena Harris and Amika Labadi. And in fourth place, the Casabu Secondary School, represented by Anthea John Charles and Jeremy Roll. In third place, we have the Dominica Grammar School, represented by Jerusha Olivake and Isabella Branca. And in second place, the St. Mary's Academy, represented by Otis Nesty and Jason Hang.
We would like to have a group picture before we leave, so we don't go away, please. The students in the finals need to have a group picture, so don't go. Wait, please. And in first place, put your hands together, boys and girls, for the Postmoff Secondary School, represented by Kennelly Barron and Anilia Aaron. Let's give our Minister of Education a round of applause, please. Thank you for your service. I'd like to call the National Bank again back, please, to hand over the final trophies here to our secondary school champions. In third place, in third place, we have the Dominica Grammar School. <laughs> Teacher of Dominica Grammar School. Can you come forward, please? And in second place, we have the St. Mary's Academy. Put your hands together for them. The teacher from the St. Mary's Academy, can you come forward, please? The teacher from the St. Mary's Academy. You have worked hard, so we recognize you this this afternoon. Yes. And our champion. And our champion school this afternoon. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Postmoff Secondary School. Yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have with us the Central Cooperative Credit Union representative with us this afternoon, Ms. Henderson Reed, and she's going to hand over the trophies, of participating trophies to the students in the competition. Ms. Ms. Reed. Okay, the students in both secondary and primary who um, was, they were part of the team, but you did not see them on stage today, but they were part of the team. We are also going to recognize them. They were their backups of the team. So we're going to call all the students of the primary school who are um, primary school backups. Come forward, please. The third person. Yes, come forward and receive your trophy. Come up, come up, yes, come one by one. We don't call in names, so just come up and take your trophy. Make a line, just come across, yes. And that also for the secondary school too. The third, the backup for the secondary schools, please come forward, please. Backups for the secondary schools, please come forward. A 
it's one per school, eh? One per school, so. We have 12. Thank you, Mrs. Reed, for your service and your support. Please pass the message to your manager and the rest of the staff of the CCCU. Thank you very much. All right, so we have come to the end. And before that, I'd like to say a word of, give you a word of, um, word of thanks at this time. So please, let us have a little quiet, please, a little quiet. On behalf of the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, the National Bank of Dominica, and corporate sponsors who have come to this year to work together to bring forth this National Mass Power Competition, we want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for giving us your financial support on all the things that you have done for us to ensure that this came to pass. We want to say thank you. We say thank you to DBS Radio in, in particular for carrying this program live for us from the time we started the elimination to at uh, this time. So we thank you very much. We want to say thank you to our Minister of Education who has left us at this time for coming and grace us with your presence. We thank you for thank the teachers of the various schools who have come in and who have worked very hard with the students to ensure that they made it to the competition. We want to thank the, um, the photographer here this afternoon who have come and give us a service for taking the photographs this afternoon. And the Ministry of Education staff who work very hard at this. We want to say thank you for the a job well done. So let's put our hands together, together for all the workers and supporters of the National Mass Power Competition. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, and see you again in the next two years. Thank you.